James Gurney here. I'm in Gunnison, Colorado, and I want to paint this view in Casein. But the light's changing, so I'm going to have to move fast. I'm working on my homemade lightweight sketch easel in a watercolor sketchbook. I start with a watercolor pencil to draw the basic outlines of the scene, including the eye level. Then I squeeze out white, yellow ochre, light red, ultra, cobalt, cadmium yellow, and raw umber. Using a flat brush, I reinforce the main lines and then block in large areas in the foreground with approximately the final color. Then mixing white in with the blue, I can start painting the sky color of the sky seen through the clouds. Then the shadow clouds. And then finally, using more white, I can mix the color of the clouds in light. This is casein paint. It was a predecessor to acrylic. It's an opaque water-based paint similar to gouache, except that when it dries, it has a sealed surface. In order to have soft edges, I need to work adjacent areas next to each other while they're both still wet. Now what I've got so far is the basic lay-in of uh, the low horizon line, uh, the far mountains, and the sky. Now I can work my way forward to do some of the trees, which are really the thing that attracted me to the subject in the first place and then some of the haystacks and the fields in the, in the foreground. In order to make that middle ground area look like it's brightly lit, I need to put the foreground in shadow uh, and to very selectively light the scene. A cloudy day like this is good for a scene like this because it automatically puts parts of the scene in shadow and parts in light. Whenever you have a scene that's partway in light and partway in shadow, you can really get a lot more depth and a lot more drama. The final accent that I've been looking forward to painting are those brightly lit yellow-orange cottonwood trees down by the Gunnison River. The whole painting took about uh, an hour and a half, and by the time I'm finished here, the light's totally changed.